your thoughts. You are your thoughts. Say with me, I am, I am. my thoughts, my and because of my thoughts, of my thoughts. I, am. I am. I am, I am. My, thoughts. my thoughts, and because of my thoughts, of my thoughts. I, am. I am. Now, we don't want any of you to begin to get moved here in these series of lessons because truth seekers are those that are seekers of truth begin to understand that they cannot lock God into the narrowness of religion. Religion narrows you. Religion is the outward drapings because you cannot handle God naked. So everyone looks for a religion or a wardrobe to put God in. And God is larger than the wardrobe you have found for him. Amen. Now there are some things that we've been saying and some things that we've been sharing with you. We've been giving you the word of God on it. We've given you things to think on, to go home and to research and to look into and to look into yourself. See, you have two books to look into. You have the word of God and you have your own self, which is an epistle. And see, so you got to check whether your epistle is aligned up with his epistle. For you are the living epistles. You are a living thought or a living revelation from God. You were sent to earth from God. Amen. To do the will and the works of your father. Amen. And when you begin to understand who you are and you come into this awareness, my God, you begin to understand that if I want to change what I am, then I've got to change my thinking. If I'm going to change what I am, I'm going to change my thoughts. And therefore, you understand that your Christian walk is not handled by some force beyond clouds. Are you still with me? I know some of you have been given some things that have been error, and you have thought that your God was somewhere over the rainbow. And now you're becoming disappointed. Because you are finding out that he has not been watching you from the outside. But he's been watching you from within. Are you ready today? Amen. Okay, let's go to our slides. Amen. And... Uh, we are going to begin to look at some areas here and we're going to start to understand some things about prayer. Amen. Prayer. Last night, it really wasn't last night, it was early this morning. Amen. God seems to talk to me when you're asleep. Amen. Maybe because you're not pulling on me at that dimension. At our next prophetic congress, amen, we've already, you're going to be shocked, amen. There's some powerful things that's going to be taking place to line up. But I'm going to teach my courses because it's not for everyone. My courses will be taught at midnight. I wanted to stand on both days. I'm going to bring in your, I'm going to close your evening and present your morning. And create a day for your life. Amen. Okay, let's, let, 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 let's get over here into prayer. Prayer is, is what? Picturing. Now, I've been meditating in this area about prayer. And the Lord began to deal with me about picturing. 
Prayer is your ability to see. Yesterday, while we were seeing the play, Nat and me, one of the brothers of the church, Brother Arnold, the play that he's pulled together, we were sitting at a table, and at the table were um, the Cavassos and Deacon Charlie and my wife and Brother Jay. We saw the lamp flicker, and in the process of seeing the lamp flicker, we thought, I thought it was remote because it's maybe they're getting ready to bring on the next act. They're getting ready to open up the next scene. But what was happening in that split second, I kind of forgot about it for a moment and then I had a revelation because now the lamp proceeded to fall. And someone was sitting up under the lamp. And as I was looking, the only thing, I mean, I began to realize now that thoughts move quicker than words that you can speak. And the Lord's been dealing with me saying, I want to answer you at the speed of thought. Because in eternity, you will all communicate to one another in thoughts. Thoughts. That's going to break the language barrier. You will hear what is in one another's mind. Because we all talk and we see in pictures. But in the process, the only thing I can tell you that I saw is that I did not see the lamp hitting the woman. I saw the lamp missing her and in the process of it it was just a miraculous act of God she didn't even know what was going on she proceeded to get up out of her seat and moved and it she the lamp missed her within seconds after that I began meditating on that until about six o'clock this morning and God says that's the way your prayers are what you picture for others is what they are, what is available to them. Say with me, prayer, prayer. Is, picturing. is picturing. If you cannot see it, you are not praying. That's why everyone can't pray for you. Because everyone can't see for you. How is a person that don't have a car, they can't see a car for themselves, so how can they see one for you? It's getting quiet in, in this half of the church. Never look at the what? Facts. Facts are lies. Write that down. Facts are lies. When you go to the ocean, it appears as though the sky and the water meet. Don't your eyes tell you that? That appears to be a fact, but it's a lie. It's really an illusion. And now that we are beginning to understand this, we are really beginning to understand that life is an illusion. Touch your neighbor and say, everything around you is an illusion. Let's move on. Amen. Always behold the one, the Holy Spirit. Always understand that by you being filled with the Holy Spirit, God wants you to always behold the Holy Spirit. Now we're going to see why. Let's move on. Because the Holy Spirit is the one. The Holy Spirit is the what? The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth, truth, truth. He is not the spirit of facts. He is not the spirit of illusions. But he is the spirit of truth. That's why when you pray, though it may be a fact that they're on crack, can the Holy Spirit use you as in a vehicle to wipe that illusion off their plate.